So we've talked a lot about asset pricing models, expected return beta models, factor models, the ICAPM, the CAPM, the APT, multi-factor models, and so on and so forth. Let's see one in action, and we'll read carefully one paper, Fama and French's multi-factor explanations paper, I think possibly the most famous paper in finance of the last 30 years, that lays out and uses the most common current model that, uh, that, that, that people are, are using in practice. Um, so, the Fama French three-factor model. Background, what are we doing? It's, it's a standard expected return beta model. Uh, if you recall, the whole idea was expected returns, we explain them by betas. Higher expected returns go with higher betas. So the model in equations is expected return should be proportional to beta. Uh, alpha is the residual, it's the part of expected return not explained by betas. Uh, this is a model where the factors are themselves tradable excess returns. So the slope of the line, the factor risk premium, is the mean of the factor, like the CAPM. Uh, the betas come from a preliminary time series regression where you see how returns co-vary with the factors through time. Then we should see expected returns higher where betas are higher. The whole question of this class of models is what are we allowed to use as factors and how do the models work? That's what Fama and French is about. So let's go read Fama and French and see what they do with their factor models. Uh, their paper starts right on the first page. Researchers have identified many patterns in average stock returns. Uh, so that's the, the, uh, the, the playground. We need to find a set of, uh, of returns where there is some variation in average stock returns. And they start by listing the many patterns in average stock returns that researchers have noticed and that they are going to try to explain, because that's what an asset pricing model is about. Uh, next, uh, those anomalies are captured, those expected returns are explained uh, by their sensitivities of the returns to three factors. Right there in par paragraph two, they tell you what they're going to do, and they tell you what the model they're going to use is. Their model says, I'm reading now equation one and equation two, the expected return on portfolio I is, expected return is proportional to three betas now, a B, an S, and an H, where they tell us the B, H, and S come from time series regressions of returns on the market portfolio, a small minus big portfolio, and a high minus low portfolio. That's right there for you on the top of page 66, which, uh, uh, sorry, top of page 56, which tells you what the model is that they're gonna look at is. So, this is a three-factor model. The three factors are market, SMB, and HML. A big question for us is which category do we put this in? Is it an APAT, an ICAPM, and so on and so forth? How do they use it? How do they test it? Does this kind of model work? So now we're, we're gonna skip to uh, table one. Uh, let's see the results that Fama French show us about this model, and we'll come back to read, for example, on page 56 and 57, their interpretations of what table one shows us. So to set the stage, I'm reading now from Fama and French, uh, page 57. To set the stage, table one shows us the average excess returns on these 25 size and book-to-market portfolios. So what, uh, what have they done? Let's skip to look at table one. Uh, and the panel they're talking about is the bottom part of table one, panel A. Uh, what are these 25 portfolios? Here's what Fama and French have done. Uh, we need to find portfolios that are interesting, that have an interesting variation of excess returns. And here's what they, how they have constructed them. Every June, they look at the size and book to market of every stock. Then the following January, they form portfolios. They put all the stocks in one port, small stocks and all the value stocks in one portfolio and so on and so forth. They've divided up the world into 25 bins based on size, which is the total amount of price times shares, the total market capitalization of each company. Small goes that way. And they've also divided them based on value. This is the book value, the accounting value of the firm, divided by the market value, price per shares. So small stocks are ones that, that are, are worth less in total. Value stocks are ones where the market price is very low uh, relative to the accounting book value. Uh, these are the growth stocks, the ones whose market price is very high. Think, think Google relative to accounting value. So those are the 25 portfolios. 
Correspondingly, in the same method, they form the factors uh, in the same way. The market factor is, of course, all stocks put in together, value weighted. The HML and SMB portfolios are long short portfolios on the same dimensions. So the SMB portfolio takes the small stocks and subtracts off the returns of the large stocks. The HML portfolio takes a, a combination of the, value, of the value stocks and subtracts off a proportion of the growth stocks. So those are the players. Now let's see that what table one says about these players. Our first table is summary statistic excess returns. These are the mean returns. The units are percent per month. So 1% per month is 12% per year, a pretty darn good return. And we want to see, is there a difference in return between the value stocks, the growth stocks, the small stocks, and the big stocks? This is my blackboard summary of what we see. Let's take a look at those numbers. The answer is yes, and it's huge. As we go from low, from big to small in that direction, we go, say, here from 36 to 82 uh, uh, basis points or uh, percent per month. In this direction, we go from 0.3 to 1.08. So you see the clear pattern, expected returns rise that way and that way and by a factor of three. This is a big effect. Uh, it would be very boring if the way our expected return versus beta graph looked like that and all the expected returns are the same. In fact, the expected returns vary enormously, and that's what Table 1 Panel A is showing you. It's showing you that small stocks and value stocks earn higher average returns. Now, you might say, great, let's go buy, but wait a minute, this is a finance class. Perhaps those higher average returns have higher betas. Small companies, companies that are, that are in real trouble, you would think would have higher betas. They didn't report that in this paper, because they've reported it in, in many others before. Asset pricing shows you a graph. In fact, this is a puzzle because those high expected returns do not correspond to higher betas. That's a fact you have to know and you don't see it in this paper. So here we are. What we've, what we've shown so far is that there's a huge spread in average return on these size and book to market portfolios. And, and we know from other work that it's not correlated with beta. Let's see if the three factor model can explain that variation in average returns.